You all know that Louis Vuitton is one of the world's most recognizable luxury brands with many renowned products like high-end leather products, iconic steamer trunks, distinctive monogram handbags, exquisite timepieces and jewelry, and cutting-edge fashion. But did you know that the owner of Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton Maletier, started his career in 1854 by making suitcases for Napoleon III's wife? Yeah, he was Napoleon III's wife's personal fashion designer. It was at the age of 33 when he opened his own artisanal workshop in Paris, France. From there, the foundations of this well-acclaimed brand were laid down. Louis Vuitton was born in 1821 in eastern France to a long-established family that belonged to the working class. His father was a farmer and his mother was a milliner. As he was growing up, Vuitton saw his family and learned the importance of having a strong work ethic and tenacity from them. He left his hometown and set out on foot towards Paris, a distance of 292 miles, when he was just 16 years old, with the hope of starting a new life for himself. When he came, the city was in the grips of industrialization, and the various forms of transportation were rapidly undergoing evolutions that made it possible to go over larger distances. Because of this, there was a demand for robust parts that could be packed up easily. Vuitton began his career as a box maker and packer by serving as an apprentice to Monsieur Maréchal, a prosperous businessman in the field. He learned how to make containers that would last a long time and how to pack them correctly, which was a valuable skill at the time. In 1854, Vuitton decided to go out on his own and start a business on the Rue Nueve du Capucine. This was several years after he had perfected his skills as a craftsman and gained a strong reputation for the quality of his work. It was at this location that he laid the foundation for his career as a baggage manufacturer. Then, in the year 1858, Vuitton developed the first steamer trunk to bear the Louis Vuitton name. The types of trunks were rounded so that water could easily drain off, but this made them difficult to store because of their shape. Vuitton was the first to market a trunk that was not only flat, but also watertight and simple to stack. It wouldn't be until many decades later that the distinctive monogram would be added. The earliest of his trunks were covered with a gray canvas that was referred to as Trianon. As his company expanded, Louis Vuitton relocated his family, as well as his workshop, to the town of Asnier. There he hired 20 people to help him construct his trunks. After years of success, Louis Vuitton began to experiment with the design of his luggage by first producing a new striped canvas pattern in 1876, and then later, the still famous Damier print in 1888. Both of these patterns are still used today. In order to detect and prevent counterfeits, hand-painted patterns were designed. Even in the late 1800s, Louis Vuitton was considered enough of a prestige symbol to merit imitations by dishonest individuals. In the year 1886, his son George came up with a clever locking technique that made it hard to pick the lock on their trunks. He subsequently copyrighted his invention. This lock is utilized in modern times as well. After a long and fruitful life, Louis Vuitton passed away in 1892 at the age of 70, leaving his family in a state of sadness. His son, Georges Vuitton, eventually took over leadership of the luxury house after his father's passing. The passing of Louis Vuitton prompted his son to once again modify the print on their luggage. In 1896, to commemorate his father, Louis Vuitton's son designed the distinctive LV monogram, which was patterned with LVs, quatrefoils, and flowers. Following his leadership, the company achieved profitability, and the distinctive monogram gained popularity among affluent customers. As a result of the brand's growing fame, Gabrielle Chanel, who is widely regarded as one of the most influential figures in the history of fashion, took notice of it. And so, in the year 1925, a handbag in the shape of a dome that was intended for personal use rather than travel was designed exclusively for Chanel. It wasn't until 1934 that she gave the company permission to begin manufacturing the bag commercially for sale to the general public. It was modified to be more compact and streamlined for everyday usage, and was nicknamed the Squire until it was renamed the Alma in 1955. The name change came about when Alma was introduced in 1955. As a result, Louis Vuitton was able to expand its product range due to the popularity of its more compact items by introducing the Keepall, 1930, the No, 1932, and soon thereafter, the Speedy. The demand for these bags soared to the sky, so much so that they are still currently made in a myriad of materials and sizes. In 1936, Gaston Louis Vuitton took over the family business after the passing of his father, Georges Vuitton. During the 50 years that Gaston Louis was in charge of Louis Vuitton, the company began to use leather in its products and redesigned their signature monogram canvas 
so that it could be used across a variety of styles. One of these styles was the famous cylindrical papillon which was introduced in 1966. When Gaston Louis died in 1970, his son-in-law, Henri Recamier, took over the company's administration. Henri saw the need to increase the brand's reach and push for the opening of retail stores throughout the world. That decision has paved the road for the ultimate parent conglomerate to be formed. In 1987, Louis Vuitton joined forces with the top champagne and cognac makers Moet et Chandon and Hennessy to form the LVMH conglomerate. This was one of the most significant events in the company's history. Yves Carcel was named president in 1990, the first head of the house who was not connected to the Vuitton dynasty. Under his direction, the company created huge waves in the fashion world with partnerships and new takes on classic pieces. In 1996, commemorated the 100th anniversary of the Damier print by manufacturing a limited edition version with fochetta leather, an unusual combination, and dubbed it the Centennial Collection. The hiring of Marc Jacobs as the brand's first creative director in 1997 was a watershed moment. Marc Jacobs created the brand's first ready-to-wear line and launched the monogram Vernis handbag collection. Steven Sprouse and Marc Jacobs worked together in 2001 to make a line of neon graffiti that was painted over the famous monogram canvas. This is still one of the most coveted collections among professional Louis Vuitton collectors today. In 2003, Louis Vuitton collaborated with Takashi Murakami to design the multicolor monogram, which features the brand's signature monogram in 33 colors. As Louis Vuitton sales continued to rise, the firm produced a bag in 2007 that became one of its most iconic models and one of the world's most recognizable handbags, the Neverfull. The Neverfull appeared to be a simple tote, made of a traditional monogram canvas with a completely lined striped interior, a side pocket, and a vachetta trim. Even with its thin straps, the Neverfull can carry up to 200 pounds. In 2013, Nicolas Gasquier was hired as the new artistic director for women's fashion at the time, and he proceeded to not only nurture but also grow the present product line. Based on the success of Gesquier, Louis Vuitton hired another creative talent to handle the men's business. Virgil Abloh was named the men's creative director in 2018. Since then, he has made not only great new accessories for men, but also things that both men and women love, which hasn't happened much since the brand started. Last but not least, Louis Vuitton has developed some of the world's most recognizable handbags, including the Speedy Bag and the Neverfull Tote. The company first targeted ladies in 1997, but branched out to males in 2000. It has grown into a multi-billion dollar industry that makes not just bags, but also apparel, footwear, timepieces, jewelry, and fragrances, and their achievements keep piling up. That was all for today. What was your favorite Louis Vuitton product? Tell us in the comment section. Big Company Business will be back next week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. See you in the next one.